Prashukwa, Tayaku Genki Chaku, Tay Day Aya, Yaka Tusane, Achawe Goshin Katya Gik and Nach Tleshwush Kanach Wutu the Art Yang, Way Language Summit Yawahi, Achtuasaku Adat, Yukh Tisha Ati, Hechwasaku Wasa at Nanin Yin. Ya Hawaii de Hwatakin Ka Yahwatlak we claim that um Dudnaki Hwasaku wasaka to saka kustin hook ka jawasa y to wasaku a dat yuk a watani heshwasaka kwati uhita ayita atki. Adasa to us a go a dart. I eat at the headwasaka quatty. A second yale dart. I Ya you did quite a dasa to us a good art. You forgot it a dear quatty. A hoa sing it, a hoa let park in a cocker quatty. A sadden in your hand was as ye Hello, well, we'll just sort of check in. How's everybody doing? What do you guys want to talk about? I got, we got our translation work we can keep going on. We've got this week and next week, and then we're into finals. Um, we had the language summit. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on that. So you can say it in Git or in English. Also, uh, if you're in Juno, I'm giving a lecture tomorrow on the Raven stories, just sort of an, on Raven as a person, uh, and so, or as a thing, I don't know. And then, uh, yeah, there's lots we could talk about. And then we've got your final projects. We've also got these last four classes. Are there anything that's going to kind of help you? Uh, we're tentatively looking at potentially having a language workshop of sorts, uh, perhaps in Teslin, uh, December, I don't know, 15th through the 20th, maybe. So that's kind of uh, in discussions right now. I wanted to put it on y'all's radar in case anybody can make it to Teslin for five days. And, and so we haven't figured out what we would do yet. Um, then I've been invited to teach sometime in March in Atlin, which is exciting, uh, perhaps during our spring break. So, uh, yes, there are two. Dachnach a tlingit yukhatangiyat na skuin ki yag eyeti. Ach a gwash jis atas yan yana at. And our final project, your final project is a, is a handbook on uh, taking the language into some domain. Uh, so whatever you decided to do, if some of you have, like I know Shonda Kate, you've been working on this clam digging, sort of harvesting uh, book. So it's just getting that into its final form and then presenting it to us, uh, I guess, two weeks from now. That's what you guys have. That's our finals meeting. And what I would like is for you to just share whatever you have. Uh, and then it doesn't have to look like an amazing document. It just has to have amazing content. And so if you need help with that, just let me know. But that's our final. It's just sort of, um, uh, and then we'll start making these little pocketbooks. Uh, these wonderful ones came out. Uh, from Carcross, which I have uh, to give to all of you. If I didn't give you one, 
I kind of, I had them, I started giving them away, I lost them, I found them. Uh, and so let me know if you didn't get one and then I'll make sure that you get uh, one of those. And then that's two weeks from, so same time, we'll get together 5.30, not next week, but the week after. You'll have emailed it to me before then so that I could share it to the group, and then you'll just sort of talk about it. Um, it would be nice if we could have some sort of closing language act as well. So just say something in the language, whatever it is, will be fine. I know we've done lots. The language summit was lots. Uh, and then uh, we will also make sure that we've got ways to my goal is to sort of um, start producing these into little books, or just like what they, they have in Tessa and Kushieto. I'll make sure, what I'll probably do is just send like a dozen of them over to somebody in Shitka uh, and just have you distribute them to the folks. Oh, you can. Uh, and so, but I would like us to make these little books. And so you don't have to worry about formatting or anything, but just make sure that you think you've got all of the content in there. So for example, uh, if I wanted to create a handbook on how to process a div, uh, so I might think about that and say, okay, there's a bunch of stuff that I need to put for even getting ready to go out to hunt, including Maybe some disclaimers that in Clinkit, people used to not talk about going hunting. They used to sort of have these codes that they would use to talk about it. Like, let's go walk around in those hills this weekend. Wink, 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 because those things are listening to you. And so there could be cultural information like that, um, which if you can write it in Clinkit, good on you. And then there would be just a number of things like, talking about how to get a rifle ready, talking about how to, uh, where to buy ammunition, talking about what kinds, um, you know, what kinds of things you might need to pack, talking about what kinds of places you might go, boats, get in the boat. Uh, you know, uh, there might be just anything you could think of that people might use. And then as we sort of, what we'll try to do is, is um, get some of these ready. Uh, I always run the risk of like, having a bunch of cool ideas that never really happen, but we can all maybe stay on task with this and just do these low production runs of these little books that we can just take places. And then as we do them, we might realize, oh man, I was out there and I wish I knew how to say, uh, there's water in my boots, or um, what's the, there's a verb for uh, getting the hide off of a deer. There's a specific verb for that. Yisiku get us away. Skinning what they do is all good. What's tearing? That's the word you're sharing with tearing it off of your skin. You do tear it. Right. Not soft. Kach tsu yuksha. And so because of that, you do have uh, two different. Let's see if I can find them. I think one is Tish. Yep. Let's just stretch the skin. Mm. Hide again. Soften. It's eight. It's under skin. Uh, so this, and so this could be some kind of fun areas where we figure out to some, some new language. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 uh, 
Let me share this. So we're going to look for skinning. And this was one uh, two summers ago, I think. We were in Yakutat, and I got this one. And so this is something that we might also discover as we make these little handbooks. These little language handbooks is Hikish, that is skinning a deer or a porcupine or probably anything that you kind of, uh, maybe it has to do with tearing the skin off because then you have eight, which is to carefully cut the skin off. And that's usually going to be a seal. And so we might encounter some things like that as you put these booklets together, as you realize, oh, there's specific verbs for this. Like there's one, uh, and then there's some stuff that I think maybe we need to make sure we don't lose track of w within our language. Like if we look under remove, uh, there's, you can remove a bunch of stuff, right? And so you're going to see some of these are kind of specific, like, you know, splinters, taking out teeth, uh, removing the guts, ashkech, and then kachon uh, ish used to like to say ashkech uh, and so um, removing the shell, kachenu So you see, both of these have this A, K, underline KW, that's a suffix which means to remove something uh, because there's one that's not in here, but it's, I think it's which is to remove the inside muscle things in like some kind of in a clam or something like a clam. thoughts, reflections on the summits, questions about your final projects, just... Uh, that's uh, a... um, your PhD, uh, dot, eh? uh, that, that was wonderful to, to watch you, uh, uh, yeah, that, that was wonderful. Um, what else? Uh, oh, uh, um, things are not good in the interior now. Uh, um, uh, Pauline Sydney, um, uh, Kunach, um, Ye Jiwane, uh, Ha Yukatongi Tin, um, uh, uh, so. Uh, it's really been an emotional roller coaster these last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, uh, it was great to meet everybody at the uh, language summit and to, to hear some good language and uh, great to watch you. And uh, I guess uh, we're having our ups and downs. Eh? But uh, anyways, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, oh, uh, Okay, can cheese you go away one? Yeah, yeah, I got to work with her a little bit this summer and then visit with her a little bit at the summit. So, um, I was talking to you, uh, maybe a week ago about people that show up and do the work, and she's one of them. Eh? So, it's uh, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, the uh, day away. Good to see you, you got on good, so you got a car. Is the final on the Monday or the Wednesday? Monday, two weeks from today. So you'll send me a, the materials for your little for your language book. I want to say little in terms of like volume, not in terms of insignificance, right? Because you know sometimes be like, show me the little book, right? But like it's this portable book that you can take into a place, right? And uh, <laughs> it's a hook. 
in like the cutest way. So uh, again, the idea is we're trying to think of a place we don't know how to take the language into that place. We're developing a little booklet and it's just a draft. Uh, don't worry about, you know, let me know if you got questions. Let's collaborate on these things. And then let's try and, uh, we'll try and produce some of them because the whole idea is to sort of reclaim these domains. Like if we don't know how to uh, pro like process and harvest seals in Shingit, then let's get all that together from you know, getting all the gear together to where are they at, uh, what do we need to know about, you know, shooting a seal. We don't want it to sink. Uh, and then getting it into the boat, our, you know, there's cultural things, there's a bunch of other stuff that we might know and want to share. Preparing it, you know, like cleaning it, harvesting, you know, braiding all those intestines and cleaning things and smoking things. There's a whole bunch of stuff, right? And so don't go down the wormhole where you end up with like a 90 page sort of thing that you can't get out of. Just try and think of it as something, but it should be you're the advanced students of Klingit, so my expectations are very high. We, what do they say? Long, from long ago, we've elevated our grandchildren high above ourselves, and then we put our expectations up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, are there thoughts, questions, reflections? Um, I think my favorite moments from the, the summit, I was only there for one day. Mm -hmm. But my favorite moments, I think, from that day were the breaks. So being able to take advantage of those breaks to go and visit with the different elders that were there um, and trying to have a conversation with them. And so I think, and I don't know what the, the other days were like, if there's other opportunities that helped kind of mitigate those kinds of interactions. but those were the most valuable moments during that time that I really appreciated and had the chance to learn from the different elders that were there. Okay. Okay. Sheesh. Yeah. And so, uh, there's, there's some things that we'll probably try and do different next time, like trying to get it to be a little bit more interactive. Although the goal was really trying to get people to talk and to document language. Uh, and so, but there, there's a number of things I think that we'll look at and try and just sort of talk about and figure out. Uh, but you can watch almost the whole thing on YouTube. It's up there now. And you can even watch it with live translations. I think you need to be at a computer to switch to the, the I don't know, you can switch cameras. And then the camera, one of them has the live translations going. Uh, we'll be working on some of the, a lot of those. Uh, there were some, you know, just in, in terms of just being able to watch like who's doing something really incredible in the language. There was lots that was going on, but I think in particular of, um, I always love Sam Johnston's stories and not a hash because he'll say things I, I don't understand them. And I like those moments because I'm like, oh, wow, I get it. There's something new in there. And then Kanak uh, Ruth Demert, her speech after the Ruth Demert scholarship was very emotional and powerful. Uh, there was lots of really good stuff, I think, that was also shared there. Um, there was some stuff in English that was like really harsh and pretty hurtful, uh, but it kind of comes with the territory. I think if you look at the grand scheme of things, that was kind of a a smaller part of it, but it was significant because it was uh, horribly ugly in the, the men's session on the last day. I don't know if anybody in here was, was there. 
that's worth watching, just so you can see. Sometimes you gotta look at the car that's trying to run you over. You know. Other other thoughts, and yeah, the the visiting was great. Getting to just talk with people, getting a little bit of face time with folks. Um, we're also, uh, you know, doing doing the grind of of what we're doing here, and to get a little bit of face time. Although, you know, I was running around an awful lot, but. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, well, men's session survivor. <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> I came out mostly unscathed. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, and, and so... It, first yeah, right. To just say, oh, you know, you could say, like, here's another fun thing, like, Yisekuke, uh, Burn. B U R N. Burn. Yeah, our cow gun. What a duke coa sugar at the gay? Pike. Pike, that's the way. Get after us a goo yisitini. Ya burn, so sagun or cow gun, right? Cow sagun is to burn completely, so we can see some different. Uh, um, so we see e. There's a couple things to note. Is there's some things we do a little different now. Uh, nation story typically wrote a lot of vowels long that we would write short. Although a lot of them they go they can go either way. Like I can say i tla, I can say e tla, and they're both. Fine. Uh, I think in Teslin they would prefer e claw, uh, but they certainly would prefer e to be the, the object. Quickly, ka de gusagan. So your pot is going to burn. Uwukawagan. The wood is burnt. Ye kanagan. It's burning. Ya kausagan. It burned up. So now you know how to say to get a sunburn, right? How, how would you say, I got a sunburn? Just based on that sentence. Yeah. Maybe. If, if you were to, you could say, you could say, and then you could say achyakosagan or chetkosagan. Uh, but then you see this, the strength of the sun is sort of indicated there. Uh, to burn outdoors, to burn trash, and then we get to become burned. So wudechech, that's to have a burn on your skin, right? And so this wudechech would be like to to get burned, or in this you have here too, like uh, and then you have uh, so when it switches to the L classifier, that means somebody is doing it, right? And so this is where you're going to get, uh, and so this is the thing, it's just like sort of compartmentalizing this information. There's another kind of fun thing here between uh, doc and doc and and how they work sort of just in relation to you as a person. Uh, so like if you were to say, uh, well, in, we're going to see it in the Yesh Khan story when that kuk, his nose starts burning, they'll say, dark um, gun away or they may, maybe they'll say, dark sagan away or dark wusagan away 
So the dak means to burn back, it's going backwards. So dak is also, because you could say dak g, and that, that could mean like step back, right? You could also say but that might mean like go back to where you were. So dak is just generally backwards a little bit. And then dark is kind of forwards a little bit. So this is just kind of interesting because we know that dark is out to sea and dark is up to the shore. But you'd also say um, uh, put your you know put put your hand out right. Gun aya achjiwu. Or if I want to cut it, I'm going to say that. It doesn't have to be a command, it could be in any form. Cutting the wood. Khash. Khash, right? So that's going to be to cut. Tashuka aka. Khaduk aka. Hake. Dasaya. A dab. I don't think that's. <laughs> so here's uh, cut, and again we get a bunch of different stuff. So here's kosh uh, with a zero classifier. That's to cut it with a knife or a saw. Shikosh uh, is maybe cutting like a rope-like object. Kaya kosh to cut it into pieces. Kashikosh to cut it into small pieces. Kakashakash is to cut something open. Right, so you can double up on these, the ka. Uh, and then you have shashakash would be to cut the hair, cut cutting hair. Uh, to cut an animal or a fish, shik uh, to cut open, like especially like a, a halibut or a salmon. Uh, to cut fish in chunks for boiling, especially cutting carefully between ribs and leaving the skin attached. Uh, and then here we have to cut a, a person. And you're going to get ek. And so you see here, shwadek ek. Dujin awa ek. So here's another question. So I look at these two verbs and I see what can I what information is shown to me with these two verbs right here. There's some stuff that nation story don't always write, didn't write down, that we can tell from these because we know some stuff about verbs. Are you were you asking the differences? I'm well, I'm saying like, you know, so nowadays we look at a verb and there's a bunch of stuff in the theme, right? And so the nation story dictionary, they give us less than we get now. Now they tell us a conjugation class uh, and the type of verb. First one plus D classifier. So this one is plus D, but what it's showing you is it's a zero classifier, but a lot of, especially action verbs, they can go plus D if a person does it to themselves. So you're going to get the SH first, which is an object, to the self. And so once you've got the SH, like that's going to push the classifier to go plus D. What else? These two verbs have something in common. They are both they're both contracted like really down. Well they both have a W. Mm -hmm. They can't. They both happen. They're perfective. <laughs> they're both perfective verbs. And so if it's perfective, now there's there's one there's in a perfective, there's one way to tell 
you can have the conjugation class being this or not that, right? Do we remember that? If the stem is short and high, that is a zero conjugation. Unless it's always short and high. So that means, we, that's my prediction anyhow. So we'll see on Carrie's Akishabu's list, uh, we see echo to wound, and so we see, uh, I don't see a command form, but if there was, I think you would just say echo, uh, but maybe we don't say that. Stab, you know, like cut that person with a knife. It would be like knife them, right? Knife them, knife that guy. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll just... This is my me recreating my trauma of the men's session. So, anyways, <laughs> coming out from knife fights. Other thoughts? Other things you've been thinking about? I know it's been a little while since we got together. Short and high is always what you said. What's that? Short and high is always what. Oh, for a perfective, if it's closed and short and high, it's a zero conjugation class. Conjugation. So that's so what the perf. Always short and high. Yes, like chen, right? So doing a little bit of this sort of stuff, we can, we can start to put those things together, and those will tell us how to, how to use the other forms, right? The other thing that we'll know about this verb is because it ends with an ejective, K pinch W, it's always going to be high. Asa? Uh, we summit away oh, tunda tani da wuti uh, ha dot to knock a yawsi a yawaka way elders. Oh, okay. Can I ask you a question, Kune? Uh, I, I think I might have asked you this before, and I, I have an idea, but I'm, I'm not sure. If I want to say I can do something uh, in Tlingit, so say, for example, if you can try to stay in the language, how, how does that, is that one of these uh, potentials or something? or? That's a good question. Uh, I, rem I remember I was asking these elders, like, how do you say, like, I can ride a bike? And they just, it wasn't working. And, and so the only way I've seen that is I think it, I think it needs a whole other verb myself. But this is something maybe if you've got speakers to work with, you can ask. Um, I'll ask some speakers as well. But I think it comes down to the verb for something to be possible, for you to believe that it's possible. Um, and so you get this one, right? And so you have like tes ulchish, or achtuch tes ulchish, or you could say achtuch chechish, which is, I believe I can do it. Right, and so that's the the way that I've usually heard these things is like they'll say and then you saw a, a very powerful statement like early on in the language summit by Kenny Grant where he was saying and so that was, there's other ways to make some of these commands as well, which I thought was very powerful. Um, means without it, right? And so he was just using that and very, 
like you know direct sort of commands. Uh, Because the, the other, it, and it kind of depends, because then you might end up using other verbs as well. Because you could, you could kind of string them together, like yechwaji, sort of like I suspect. Yechwaji, um, or you could just say, uh, and so like and that's that's but I'll have to ask because maybe I wasn't asking it in the right way because sometimes you you think you're asking like a pretty clear question but it turns out you're not uh, so I'll ask but there there is a verb form like when we get into these you know we're talking about these verb modes so in these verb modes, there are ones that are specifically uh, like to say you can't do something or you might do something. Those ones are, are pretty specific. Um, so when we go and look at how we put these verb modes together, and, and there's more than these. There's some other ones too that, uh, that are out there. But as we look at how to put these things together, uh, we look at, you know, doing it or does it regularly, depends on the verb, uh, not doing it or does not do it, uh, did it, uh, didn't do it, whoops, will do it or it will happen, won't do it, it's not going to happen, uh, in the process of doing it, or in the process of happening. You get the do it verb, the don't do it verb, and there's a couple different ways to say don't do it. There's basically, there's a prohibitive, there's a prohibitive that has a repetitive marker on it, and then there's one that we call admonitive, which is like be sure not to. Uh, then we have get repetitive imperfective, and as far as like how do you use this stuff? Like for now, you, you look up the verbs that have them listed and then you start figuring out how to put them together. Um, because some of them, uh, like this one, it means does it regularly, right? Like, yeah, I, I read, I eat Cheerios, I do you know, whatever. It's, it's like this thing that you do on a regular basis. But it's not like every single time. And so now you're getting into like, are we talking about now and then? Are we talking about regularly? Are we talking about all the time? Uh, so like, so for example, um, if you want to look up a verb that's using some of these, like getting away from our knife fights, <laughs> we get into uh, to be, let's just say to be, right, to be some certain way. Uh, so you get in a perfective habitual, yechetna teach. I'm like that every time. I'm late, I'm whatever. Someone might say, Itika, yechetna teach. You're lazy, that's how I always am. But then I'll get uh, balled out. But you yetik or yetich, it's you, it's all, it's regularly that way. So maybe not all the time, but yeah, on a regular basis. And you'll, as you sort of just look at things, you'll spot when these are being used and which ones. And so basically, are you getting that CH ending or are you going to get a, an underline X or a K type of ending? And that's going to tell you what type of repetition you're looking at. And it kind of depends on the thing. So as you look at more oratory and, and you look at stories and speeches and stuff, that these are the things you start to look for. Then you figure out how to put them together. Um, like this one is one that I think people use, would use quite a bit if we learned how to use it, which is haven't done it yet, right? So you could say like, uh, I haven't been there, right? I haven't been there. And so if someone, I was just having this conversation yesterday about <clears throat> Washington, D.C., because people are going there. And so you could say, like you could look up this one, um, 
I haven't been there yet. Which, what you're communicating is you have never been there. And so, like, these are some things, like, how would you say that? Oh, she'd never seen him before, right? She had never seen him before. So we know that teen is what we're looking for. Um, oops, this is a different, oh, same verb root. Uh, we're going to have the S classifier, and then we're going to look for the negative perfective habitual kashuchsetinch. She hadn't seen him. She'd never seen him before, right? And so now maybe we're talking about now she sees him. Right, so this is these are the these are how these things are put together, and then they follow a certain there's a pattern. You're gonna get kleich, you're gonna get an arealis, you're gonna get a perfective, you're going to get the conjugation prefix whatever it is, and then you're gonna get a minus i classifier, and then this shows you what the stem should be, right? And it's kind of some of them are unpredictable, so you just gotta sort of remember so hasn't held it yet, hasn't written it yet, um, hasn't felt that way yet, uh, hasn't worked yet. Uh, I haven't worked yet, right? Maybe I'm just sitting at my office on Facebook all day. Uh, hasn't gotten better yet, hasn't heard it yet, hasn't gotten bright yet, hasn't thought that way yet, right? So it's just and this is just how the thing gets put together. So we were talking, though, about these potentials, right? So might do it. Um, and then these ones get kind of long. But what you'll see is once you learn how to put a potential together, then you could change the things that are around that verb to change what we're talking about. So, for example, you could see here, okay, they might work. Maybe they'll work, right? Around our language, maybe. And then you could say, if we go to the negative, the verb itself is not changed at all. But we put in front, we put, or we put in there, right after And then the other way that we could change that is you could have uh, now it's going to change, but the only way it's going to change is get this suffix at the end. I cannot work. There's no, or there's no way she or he can work. Uh, so there, there is a way to say, like, you can't. But to say you can, like, it's really interesting that it's taken a lot of digging, and I don't think that that's a very common thing. Which is, which is just interesting. It just shows you how the language sort of thinks, uh, how Klinka people uh, thought, you know, like to say, uh, I can climb that mountain. You would say, I believe it's possible for me to climb that mountain. That's, a, that's what I would predict any. So I would say, That's how I would predict it. it's going to go. Uh, but that's usually how I think those things, you know, because then you could talk about it too. You could say, Yahweh um, Achsi, Oshikuk, Ade At Kandetzechte, yeah. Achoe Ade Kakwat, Ade Kakwatzech, I think. So you could say, My daughter learned how to ride a bike, so she's going to ride her bike there. So you could talk about like somebody learning how to do something, and then. Um, yeah, it's kind of a long answer. Non-answer? Is that what qualify? <laughs> you would talk for a long time, you'd be like, yeah, I didn't answer your question. But what's next? <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions, ideas, inspirations, frustrations, whatever? Okay, so yeah, these the verb modes, there's a lot to them, uh, but this is kind of your decoder key. It shows you what kinds of things you need to be in there. Uh, so like whenever we use these, what you find, what I, what I find now, the pattern of simplification of Tlingit is that 
things will start to get dropped. And it's okay if you're doing that, but if everybody's doing that, then I think we're, we're getting into a, a troublesome area. So one of the things that tends to get dropped from this is the irrealis and the conjugate. You know, someone will just say, uh, and we'll get what you're, what you're saying. Um, but I think that could be mistaken as, like, that's not the way, you know, that's not the way someone was walking. But if you say, like they, they can't go there. There's no way they can make it over there. Um, anyways. Anything else? Okay, uh, but check out those videos. Uh, there was some really great language moments. Uh, I really appreciated. Kesh <laughs> 
ጫቆ ወይ ቀስ ወይ ኪክስ ዲቃ ወይ አዴው አዴ ሀሰ ከውለ ጽስ ሁቀት ዲከይስ ቂሀስ ያቀቅ አጭግ ያ ሀስቲ ኢን ከሁኒ ከዳት ጽ ቀስ ከስጨ ኸጥ ያ አቃ አዌ ወይ ሻካ ኩኒ ጽ አዴ አዴ ሀስ ወቂን ወይ ሲንጊት ኩኡ አጨ ወይ ቀስ 1970 away was dahun jin katka ke jin tak shu wa khi khi aya we hafa yaqu we kanaka has to tawasaku has to yaqu aya has aw shayhi has aw chaku tash has to ji qua we as ten uhan qua ha ji ye wu ti ha an ka ye we hawasaku wasa hasa wa akhadat hastaye ya waqa atwasgu yiji tu tu wati ya as kan ana ya ya ku aya gakhit ye yitil ko has ya ye awa hatwasgu ko atal dana haji di ti jas yiji yes awa ya has tsu ko ne has tu yishku ni aya has aw la ye khi ya jasa tu wasku jas allah ha fa i jas ha wain in your tongue ya 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 has to eat the she awa think it how bill demer daya desai gwas te qu u du in ah shawa qata khaya ya wa atwa has ausku aya wu jin ye jit ne nu ya ha yu khatangi da ta ha qusi ya wa uh what do we see on the interior books can you describe pick size subjects uh yeah the it's new phrases in shingit uh so it's a small pocket size book of uh phrases which i think are great but then i was i guess i got to come with like an optional magnifying glass for kashan kasha watchan Cuz I like really tiny prints but I know that I have years from now I'm probably not going to like it that much but uh yeah and it's I think it's just phrases that you've been collecting uh the videos from the summit yeah kind of cheesh they are on the Alaska Heritage Institute's U- YouTube channel uh check watch as many as you can uh, I think it was really and even if you were there like watch them again and see what kinds of things you might be gathering and if there's ones that you want to sort of uh there's some prime material to take over the winter break because winter break doesn't mean take it that easy you got to find some projects to keep you going or else you come back and you've sort of taken a step backwards maybe uh again i think i said this at the beginning we're tentative we're maybe going to plan uh, a language gathering in Teslin uh it's just going to be like a workshop maybe some immersion activities probably december well there's a meeting i think december 14th and 15th in whitehorse just on languages in the yukon which if you're interested in attending and then right after that we're going to try and do probably a 5 day workshop just we haven't fully planned it out yet we we'll kind of see what what folks might be wanting needing and then i i think having just more opportunities to engage in the language is always super helpful other thoughts questions what was the good head uh um chakwe ha ha um beaver prow kashle kashle suits mm. uh akawe at khakte ye khoti um chushuku aya ha yu khatangi chutlekawe ha ka khuka khuka kasti um kalkawu ausikuun uh i ajo 
一二九位，啊，和很，那他现在他那和有很痛的一二九位，嗯，跟起，跟起，啊，他看到一几页，嗯。Ach ja, ach ja, Dr. Hune, Kalkau, Khodji, yes, ich hasch geht. Oh, ja, ke. Ach, so was ich gut, yes. Tschüss, klein. Ja. เยาว์ยาเอกียาอันกุนตาเตียยุทธขวัญสุยุทธขวัญทั้งเยาว์ยุทธขวัญยุทธขวัญทั้งยาวาสะอัตวุเนเยาว์วัสจิสตักเตห
are they were good. Yeah, cup. Goodness cheese. Yeah, goodness to God. I couldn't have a yard disgusting. Had a kick, Kagwans, Kagwans, Gaya. A two were woos. Ya dark skatniks away had to us a go for two were archy. Tarko Kalk, yach. Ah, tess ach skatsnigi, a ya. Ah, his wasa, ye shas skatsnigi away. A do, sir. A quatan sing it enough. A do, sir, I'll secure you that. Get away, one canines ach kahwa hate. Hosaku ahu ah hanach sati ah. Quas just take ah, sing it enough you had the atki. Quas dachnach, quas naskinach. Quas hesh has to gee. A joey wooch ikach to she nooch. Yak eh, will cheese. Okay, other thoughts? Anything else? Launched into a little big speeches. It's good stuff. Okay. When I had when I said dark and dark earlier, although I, I gotta show you guys, I gotta lighten the mood a little bit. Um. Well, I gotta find this. Find where I put it. Um, oh, here it is. So I was trying to think of like little ways to help keep these things straight, and so I made a poster because my kids are into Doc McStuffins, and so I didn't want to get sued, but here's Doc <laughs> McStuffins. <laughs> Doc McStuffins. And I think I had, I said them backwards earlier, so one is out to sea, one is to the shore. But I think in the Tlingit brain, a person is naturally standing on the shore looking out to sea. Because dark is that way, and dark is that way. Right? So if you say, dark tzak is ut, and that means stick your tongue out, because it's going that way. Dark uh, put your arm out that way. But then I think dark would be bring it back, and then kuch would be push it out that way. I think the other one that was kind of neat is ga nach yisukuke dasawe ga nach naski nach. Oh, naski nach is three people. So whenever you count, if you put nach on it, you're going, uh, you're talking about people. So dakhuni nach aya akayati abkhat kejini nach. So if I say kejini nach, that's five people. What if I say kejin ka? What is that? Five in a row. Uh, a group. By fives, right? Yeah, so by five. So there's a, a set of five and a set of five and a set of five, right? Uh, what about Kejin Dahin? Five times, right? So Dahin is times, Ka is by groups, Nach is people. So what if I said, uh, like I wanted people to do something. There's some verby, verby, verb thing there. And I said, in groups of two people. How would I say that? Uh, is that what you were saying? Right? So it would, ka would be in there, and nach would need to be in there as well. Because I would say dach ka if I said in pairs, right? In pairs of people, dach ka nach. So that would be like say, ach tu asuku adat ye jagach tu nei, dach ka nach. I want us to work on this in groups of two people. Nask ka nach. And so.
done with that. Done so nothing. is guff always first, or is it uh, dependent on what order you're saying it in? It, it's well. There's. It certainly seems like there's a suffix order, and so qa is on one wheel, nakh is on another. They don't. You don't have to have one to have the other, but qa would be first. Rashi. Oh. And then there's a couple others that are like this, like these suffixes. And they can only come, and some of them, like, you can only have one. Like, day and dakh, and they can only be one. Qa, you can't add another one of those on there. So do they work kind of like conjugation? Like, you can have ga, u, ga, but... Uh... It's dependent on the order, and you can only have one of them, For like one per one per wheel thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the nach, you can have that one. And let's see. Let me pull open this thing I just closed. So when we look at uh, noun suffixes, so we can modify nouns. Um, so you can have plural, diminutive, uh, but then to have both of those, you've got to have the khesani. So ke in khe. Generally, I, I think it's very rare to see more than one suffix on a, on a noun in Klinkit. I'd say pretty much just say there won't be one, in, except for the exceptions, like qa nakh, which is probably just sort of combining them into one uh, rarely used because you, you don't really say by two by you know people but we had we were sort of doing a language workshop and then I was trying to figure out how to say that and I predicted qa, and I got corrected to qa, nakh. and then there's some and you're gonna get into some dialect things with some of them like I don't know what they would say the old people in Yakutat because in Yakutat they'll say dih as opposed to deh. But some places they'll say, um, and then when we say tleich, that's one, but they'll say tleinach, just one person. And you'll say tleidehin. You won't say tleichdehin, so the, the end of the word sometimes also falls off. Uh, and so another case is deh often goes to dach, but there are some speakers that will just say dech instead. But I don't know if the old speakers, like, let's, let's say, like, you say dach dehin. But I think some speakers might prefer dech dehin or teich dehin. I don't know. It's, it's, so oh, good. Maybe it goes dach dehin, like A to, goes to E in the interior. Yeah, yeah, in like old speakers in Carcross, they might say Uh But there, there is this, I, I think what you have is there's this E-I to an A sound when it shortens. That is a pretty regular thing. Uh, so for example, Ch'eo, when it gets contracted, will be Ch'ao. So to say Sandy Mountain, You'd say shao sha if it's one compound word. And so that and same with te. So te, if you put a suffix on it, will become te, right? Take a little rock. So it'll, it's gonna get pushed long and low. However, there are cases where if it's getting compounded onto something, what you'll see is a weird thing where I think it switches to the EI, but then switches again to the A. Tukhayi is a rocky peninsula. And then Tlaikka Tlaik, one by one. Yeah, Tlaikka, Tlaikka Nakh, one person at a time. Yeah, well. And then some speakers, I think they might say Tlaikka Nakh, but I don't know. I gotta get a bunch of speakers together and do some number crunches with stuff like that. Because it's really interesting to me. Well, I like the old Tani. Ka. It's not ka. Yeah, yeah. So, and you used to be able to count, you'd always count by 20s. So, if you're counting like a, the old Tlingit people, 
and you want to count 80, you'd say, uh, and Kijin Ka would be 100. We don't count like that anymore. We were playing cards, and Ka Guansk was counting like that, and I was telling him he was wrong. But then he was like, count the old way. It's like, okay, fine. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions? Today was just kind of a day of reflection, creeping back into it. We've got three more classes left, too, so I want to make sure that we're getting what we're hoping. And, you know, we certainly keep going next semester with a little bit more content. The content next semester will be working on stories specifically. Uh, so sometimes we're just going to listen to them and talk about them. Sometimes we'll do a little bit of translation work. You know, we'll just sort of see what folks feel like doing. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, 10 minutes, and we'll do a little bit of this yesh uh, So Raven has, and this is really cool because there was this uh, verb that we have right here. That's not documented anywhere. Right, and so we're we're very lucky as you sort of dive into these stories a little bit more. Sometimes you'll find some stuff that's been translated, but then you realize like that you know that means to tuck somebody into doing something, right? Ayakawaka, right? So he talked the owl into doing it. So Raven sees this fire. He's trying to talk all the birds into getting it for him. Uh, and there's other stories where they say all the birds were his grandchildren. And then he's, they're all like, no, we don't want our beaks to burn. And then there was Kuk, who had this really long beak, and um, it was a really good-looking nose. And then Raven talked him into doing it. And um, that's kind of where we left off. And so he's, he flies out, and I think maybe he's, he's bringing it back right now. And he had attached this dried pitch teich. So teich is like dried pitch or pitchy wood or a torch uh, that was obviously pitch wood back in the day or and then is the chewier kind of a pitch and then a kahi is the uh, runny sap okay anybody want to read this sentence two lines repeated okay Everybody, the shoe wood dark nagan. And how do we translate that? Stuck his nose in the fire. Well, so we'd have the fire and would usually have khan or something like that. Gun as a low tone, I think also means fire, but it's somehow a little bit different because you have ganda and all these other types of things. But here we have a verb. So when we take the verb, you know, this is the verb for something to burn. And what's the clue? His beak. Yep. So, and then we've got the da, which we just talked about. So how are we going to put this together? It's burning off. So if we had burning off, we would say ah oh, instead of dark. And so this is where we start to see how these directionals work with verbs that aren't motion verbs, right? Is that like towards the mouth area? Yeah. So I would say burning back, right? It's, it's burning because he's got this pitch on the, on the, out on the, probably at the hook or at the point of his beak, and then it starts burning. Dark nagan, it's burning back towards him, right? And so there's, you know, we could, there's probably different ways to say it, but I'm at the keyboard. Okay. Natu, look. Awe, tsach ade, adan gwaneye ye. Okay. To cut you hung away, Tess a day a dun one day. A 
Don Cornelia. Don Cornelia. And we just talked about this one too. How fortunate. How are we going to translate that? I, I'm guessing that um, I don't know what that da is doing, but uh, there's no way he can do it. Yeah, so what, what is this? How do we use this verb in other modes? What is this verb? Adane? Yeah, adane, right? And so if we want to go kind of find it, we're going to go look for ne. Why was that coming up today? Oh, I was in a meeting, and they said, all in favor, say I, which is Hawaiian for yes, all opposed, say nay. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> and then you appear, that was just like an hour ago. <laughs> Everything is lining up. Okay, so yeah, to work on it, to do, this is, you know, and so the da means like, uh, on something, right? This is usually working on something. There was nothing you could do about it. Is that? You couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So if we get down here and we see um, no way she or he can work on it, right? So what is what do we think it's talking about here? Yeah, right? <laughs> like he couldn't fix it, he couldn't stop it, his beak is burning, there was And then this is the thing where, like, sometimes we might say, oh, well, that's the translation, but maybe that doesn't, maybe we want to say, and when we get into the Raven stories, when, when the book comes out, uh, you'll see there's a bunch of different ways that these are used. These are used a lot in the Raven stories, like, uh, and they'll say, too, like, there was nothing he could do about it. There's probably three or four different ways it puts together that same sort of thing. And, and so they're probably saying, like, couldn't put it out, couldn't stop it, couldn't, you know, there's a bunch of ways we can probably um, take care of that. Hey, okay. not too. Wick the gach. Cut you on a gewick the car. Okay, like how in a car does away. Something about crying with a k on it, so you get crying out. It's a little bit different. Kadirach means like to cry out. Is that a conjugate or not a conjugation, but a shortening of kadagach? Yeah, yeah. And so with fluent speakers, if something right before the verb ends with a vowel, you're going to see that contraction happen a lot. So you could say uh to write. And you could say adikshikhitiye where it just gets, it gets smashed up like that. Gosh, cheese. What is this akiwe? <coughs> There's a bunch of different ways that these things are used. Uh, and you'll see them in the stories. And it's going to be, and it can get really long, asikiwe, akiwe, gi. Uh, it's very similar to the ge, but you know, th there's probably some slight differences there. I would probably say maybe, maybe he's crying out. And, and it's it's something that you'll notice in Shingit storytelling that this is something that's used a lot, just to say maybe this maybe this is what happened, right? Uh, no way, Yandakan. Okay. 
ye yan ay ka takat yuhan on the way yan dakhin on the way yan dakhin ay ka kina ko atasa he's flying with it natu kwas huchi aya yata it a ya kwan you awa ada ya ka okay the cut you on it do I have one the car enough that's away the car enough that's away courage you away a diet was said or that's how it was said that's what I said. Is what he said. <laughs> Something was said. Yes. <laughs> Adayaka. Uh, and so again, like there's just getting into some subtle, oops, some slight differences between some of these things. Is it a dialectical difference with idu ayakon? Because I've heard it as igu ayakon. That's a really good question. Uh, this there's certain phrases that are really hard to analyze and some people will kind of resist resist it being analyzed so i've heard iku ayakhwan and i've heard iddu ayakhwan and i think i don't know which one it is right i i think it's a i think it's a dialect thing i think it could be just something that changes over time like there's some of these phrases that get used like so much and in certain ways that they get kind of frozen and they're hard to pull apart like gunachish it sure looks like it's a verb right but there's some interesting things that are going on in there um but the chichish part because there's a chichish verb so it would make sense that it's related to that in this case gu a has to do with like wishing or hoping. Do ah uh, would be more like perhaps a person is situated, right? Ha or standing, right? It's standing at a place. And so it's interesting because you also have a pronoun there, which is i, which could change to ye which shows you like there's there it's a possessive pronoun and so then it gets a little bit more interesting on how to analyze that as a sort of you know because the one is in there which is also this sort of be sure to type of a thing um although it's a way to soften commands right yeah yeah yeah, just think it. I know I have has in Jose Yehi. Play the hint for to us to go. One can in. Kakanach. Cards at he yah a ya. Chuck away in a canoe. Kai he. Get on. Gook. Wait in a go. Ach to us to go for a tush on tin. Much away do in Kakonigi. I'm not a boot. It's kind of fun when you see how kids like put language together like that. So the the kwan, yeah, so there's these the yuck is like something, and so it's it's really hard to analyze that one. Um, but yeah, there's a few speakers that we know say and said do ah uh, and most say probably go ah uh. and so it's it's interesting i think i've seen it as da ah uh, one time i'm just like well, i have no i just throw the towel completely in but yeah it is you'll hear uh some people who'll say like there was another one um 
Helen Watkins said, well, my mom used to say, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's a total verb. And so it's just different different places. And is uh, a dialectical difference from ha'e? Yeah, yeah, you'll hear that in uh, car cross. The other one that changes quite a bit is um, dla. And then you'll hear hadla and hado and hada. And I guess nowadays when people are speaking, I don't know, there's lingish, which I guess Kahuan Ish said it was, he, the old people called it sounds like a broken pot when people are trying to speak English but they have such a thick clinket accent but there's got to be a term for coming the other way where the English is fully influencing influencing what we say like people would say um, I don't even know how that's it but instead of ha gla they'll say hot gla or ha gla right the g g g l sound and so it exists now. People say, I saw a license plate, it says hot gla. And I was like, what the hell is a hot gla? And they realized it's, so I was like, hot gla, right? So um, that's, what I, that's one of the projects that I want to do with like home because everything's been so Anglo-Saxon. And then the spelling of Thinget <clears throat> was so different back in the day. And so when we got our song sheets, it was written a different way. Mm -hmm. And you know how people used to say Gunashchish, and so that's the way it was written in like some of our, some of our, some of our song sheets or some of those translations. And so what I'm hoping to do is to be able to go back and listen, you know, to our recordings, work with some some of the elders, work with some of the song leaders, just to figure out, and not necessarily rewrite them. Well, maybe rewrite them to the point where. Like, at least I can understand them and then try to figure out if, because I want to be able to teach it. And if I'm going to teach it, I want to teach the appropriate translations. Right. And I have, I have no idea if, so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm doing things the correct way. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll always, I think, just kind of do your best in those fields. And then you'll also find it's going to be helpful as we some maybe we want to make new songs, but we don't want all the new songs to sound like baby clinket. You know, I don't want to offend anybody, but when when you really look at those old love songs, like one, they're always it's like a blues song. They're always like so sad when you translate them. Like, I want to see you one last time before I die. You know, like whoa, you know. But then also like there's some really complex stuff. It's just like the stories and the oratory. It's like you gotta learn how to do the hard stuff because that, that pops up in there. Like they'd say, um, It's like, oh, that's kind of a hortative type of verb at the end. Because tagut would be, let me go, let me go there. Right? And so, um, so you'll find that there's a, a few different sort of verb modes that kind of, you only hear them in songs, although they start popping up in other places. I think Yesh uh, Uchtla uh, was spotting them in Seideya, Elizabeth Nyman's story. And so that's why we, we kind of tease those things apart now and then, so we can look at how to, how do they put them together. So if you're composing a song, like, oh, I want to use one of those fancy verbs, like, and that's when people talk about like the old time clinket or the classic clinket. I think that there's a number of things. One is we're, we're learning how to think more in clinket as we do this more and more. And then the other part is we're learning how to do those high level grammatical things that composers did and storytellers did and speech makers did. Yeah, there's a lot of songs that have um a for verb it just it's like i don't know what the verb mode is but um like uh a shot 
Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, uh, is that is that hortative or is that? It it depends. It sound yeah. It's I think it is. Uh, you could say qashashat. Um, that one I think could be let him or her. I think it's actually a command form hmm. because I would expect a qashashat uh, or qatushat. It gets a little tricky when the conjugation is also qa to tell whether it's a hortative or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that case, a hortative for the shashat verb. So when we look at that shashat verb, um, we'll see that with the L classifier, it's qa conjugation. That mm-hmm. means hortative would have to have it there twice. Right, so you'd have to have a qah shashat. Right, so you're gonna you're gonna have qa and qa because it seems like it's like a it's like a song type. It's like a verb form that only comes up in songs because it's in other ones too, where it just it's or like it's just qa and the verb root. Uh huh. Like, yeah, and yeah. it's the, the qa it pops up in other times. Like sometimes I think I'm talking. And I'm, I don't know if I'm using it correctly, but I'm kind of dropping it in there. But I think that's just from like hearing it out there. There's another one where you're going to get the qa in there. Then you're going to get the verb and there'll be a T at the end. Hmm. And that means like I did the first verb so that I could then do the second verb. Hmm. So that's getting into not even, it's like it's, it's sequential is what it's called. Hmm. Like I could say, um, uh, and then I should say, I think, but you know, so those, those are some things, or I should probably just say, I don't know. Anyways, I'll, I'll find some examples of those. Okay. 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 Okay.